Okay, so part two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I already have uh, pretty much all of this built um, uh, to make things easier, I'm going to use that so that we can do the exercises. Um, although, let me try myself this new version of Pattern Up because it may just be better to do it that way. Let's see. Yes. Because uh, that blue header I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> uh, I, was, I thought it was because of the option that we picked. but um, So yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm going to try again this. Uh, oops. And npm create pattern lab. Okay, so I'm going to let this run and so Twig edition, Twig demo. Okay, so that's going to run. So we are going to build our first component. And if we look, uh, remember the the card component that that we that we saw earlier. There's several little pieces in that, and so we're gonna break that card down into little chunks, right? Uh, break it down all the way to atoms. So the first component we are going to build is what I normally call an eyebrow, or it's more like a label. So we're gonna use that for the date on that card, okay? So if you are ready to start with that, let's walk through that, and we can start building something. So I'm going to since I'm rebuilding my pattern lab, I'm going to let that finish. For now, I'm going to use what I already have built. And so if you go into your pattern lab project and expand source, and then expand patterns, and under 00, zero atoms, go ahead and expand that. And you should see a an option for, I can't remember what the numeric number is because I removed these numbers for to fix the bug. Uh, you don't have to remove the numbers though. Uh, under text, um, it was probably zero, 00 text maybe or uh, whatever option that is. Under text, you will see several things there that I already built, but we are going to build a new item. And you are welcome to use any numeric value you want. We're going to call this, let me move this up there. We are going to call this eyebrow. Um, again, you're welcome to use the numeric uh, digits there or, or not use it at all. It's really, it, it, for this part, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to call this eyebrow that twig. We're going to call a twig template. And this will become our component every time we want to use the date field with a specific style for that date field or every time we want to label some content, right? Um, a lot of times on websites, you know, there is very special styles for tags, for labels, for that kind of things, and they are used throughout throughout the website, and that creates consistency throughout the website. So, so the people become familiar with when this label is there, they know that the purpose of this is to label the content. Maybe it's a blog post, maybe it's something else. So this is more of a, a label. So what I'm going to do is uh, before I create the markup, I mentioned before that we are going to be using that data, that JSON file, to provide dummy content to our components. Now, we could technically use, create a new file here called eyebrow 
the YAML, we could do that also. That will work just fine too. Um, but since we already have a lot of files in there, I don't want to keep adding more to that. Uh, but you're welcome to do that if you like. Um, the only requirement is that your tweak template matches the name of that YAML file. And so that way, Pattern Lab and Twig will know to look for the data of that component into that YAML file with the same name. If, if the file with the same name doesn't exist, then Pattern Lab goes and looks into that data JSON file for your data. So you have the choice to create a, an eyebrow.yaml or just use the data file uh, and create a, 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 an object there for the for the eyebrow. So let me show you how I did that. So I go up to the data directory under source. I expanded that and here this data JSON. Okay. Uh, I think I let me see if I find it. I may have done it. Okay. Uh, here we go. So I created this object which is an eyebrow and it's got two properties, two keys, right? Text and a modifier. The modifier is empty and that is optional. You don't have to do it. Uh, it may come handy at some point. So here's what you need to create. Um, inside your data JSON creates uh, something like this. The text, again, this is just dummy content. Now, if you want to go the other route, which is creating a YAML file for that inside here, where the component tweak template is, you could do something like 08. Again, the name has to match the tweak template, eyebrow.yaml, right? And this will be eyebrow. The format is different here, right? So it will be text. and then modifier, like that. So whichever way you want to go is fine. If I, let me uh, test something real quick here. If I change that date, if I, you notice that my code has been compiled because I saved those changes. Um, if I go to Pattern Lab and I go to text, and look at the eyebrow, should be here somewhere. Here. There is the eyebrow. Now, the reason I know that this file is now getting the data from my YAML file that I just created is because the date is different than what I had before. The one on my JSON file has got a different date, March 16th. This one's March 18th. So I know that. Pattern Lab is looking for the data for the eyebrow inside that new YAML file I just created. If that file didn't exist, then it will look for it uh, from the JSON file. So the reason for way you, why you may want to do something like this is if you already have a lot of files inside that folder for components, um, in order for you to provide that com that, those components data, you have to create a, a, a new file for each component, a YAML file inside the folder. And that can get pretty lengthy. You could get too many files in that folder. So instead of creating one single file for each component, you can just create your data in the JSON file. And that way you keep that folder clean. You only create your tweak, tep you only create your tweak templates there. So just something to keep in mind. It's not not one way is better than the other. It's just a preference on, you know, how, how many files will you have in this folder if you have to create two files for each component, right? The twig and the YAML. Or if you want to create just the twig, keep the folder a little bit cleaner. So it's just an option for you to think about. So as an example here, I'm going to delete this file. And so this was the, the, the date on this was March 18th, right? So I'm going to delete it. Twig is, uh, Pattern Lab is going to recompile uh, let's see here. So it's recompiling, it's rebuilding everything because you notice that there was a change made. If I go to Pattern Lab, 
Now the day has changed. It's March 16th now because now it's using the data from the JSON file since the local file was deleted. So, <clears throat> so this is the, the data part. Now let's look at the markup for the eyebrow. So if I go to the tweak template, here's what the markup looks like. Now, and you, you may think, wow, all that for just one little string of text? Well, when you think of components, when you're building components, you have to think uh, long term and you have to think a way of how you can leverage what you're building so that you can reuse it, right? That's the main premise of components. So if we hard code things into our components, then we defeat the purpose of being reusable because then you're going to end up with just static content. We want to create things a little more dynamic. So what I've done here, I started with a paragraph tag with the class of eyebrow. And I'm doing an if statement here in Twig. And I'm saying if there is a value for that modifier key that, I, that we saw earlier, right? If there's a value there, I want to pass that value as a class to this component, right? And then I'm going to print the value of the text key. And that will be the date. So if we look at our data again, um, the text value is this date. So that's what we're printing there. And then the modifier class is empty. But let's say I want to use something like eyebrow small. Now, this is when we start talking about BAM, and, and we'll go more deeper into this in a little bit. I'm going to save this. This should be rendering or compiling. Maybe I already did. I just didn't notice. And I'm going to look at Pattern Lab. Nothing has changed here because really the, the visual part is the same. If I click this little gear on the top right corner of my screen and I click on Show Pattern Info, you get this nice little palette where it tells you pretty much, it shows you first how the twig looks for this component. If I look at the HTML, you can see that now that component has another class. Sorry, let me, I can move this up. But now the component, in addition to eyebrow, it's got that new class that I added at the bottom next to it. Because now the modifier key has a value of eyebrow small. And this, could, this is how we can create component variations where we can say, well, okay, if this component has this extra class, then let's change the color to red, or let's change the color to, to something else, right? Or let's make it uh, not all capitals. So, and it's still the same component that we originally built. We're not having to rebuild it again. So, any questions about this? So, something as simple as that. So, you, at first, when you look at the code, the markup, the HTML, it may seem a little overwhelming for just printing a date, why there's so much there. But when you start thinking, okay, now this becomes a little more dynamic because now I can use this component somewhere else and not only can I change the value for it, but I can also change how this component looks if I want to without altering the original component because now I can use that other class to make those changes to the component. Any questions about that? Okay. As far as the CSS, uh, so what I said before is if we were using a modern um, compiler for CSS, right, from SAS to CSS, this would have automatically just compiled our CSS. But since we're not using that and I don't want to um, give you um, another task to, to, to do, what I've, what I've done instead is I've created the CSS so I created an eyebrow.css inside the public CSS location. Okay. And this is pretty straightforward. It's just using the class of eyebrow and just a couple of styles, like changing the text to be capital and adding some little space in between each letter. Not, nothing big there. Um, and then the final thing to complete this component is inside the meta directory. I went to the head twig and I added the CSS that I just created. It's right here. 
I just added a script for that. So that Pattern Lab can use those styles on, the, on any element that has the class of eyebrow. Any questions on that? So we first create the data. That should be the first thing. Um, at least that's the first thing I create when I'm creating a new component is I first look at the design and I, and I, and I take uh, inventory of what fields does this component have. Like it has an image, it's got a title, date, text, and a few tags, right? That's the card. And then on my data, I go, whether it's JSON or my YAML file, I create each of those fields with dummy content. The next step is I move on to the markup, to the twig, to write uh, the code where I'll be able to print this data. In the case of the eyebrow, I created a paragraph tag and I added, I could have just kept it with just eyebrow as the class and that would have been the end of it and then just print the content and that would have been okay. But just to show you how you can actually, even something as simple as that, you can still extend it a little more uh, so that it becomes more dynamic when you're trying to use it. Um, it is, is a great way to be able to make things reusable. And then finally, I did the style sheet. I wrote a couple of lines of styles, and I included that style sheet into the head of the of pattern lab so that, um, so that those styles are used when the eyebrow is rendered in pattern lab. And that's kind of the same process we're going to take for all the components we'll build today. So just keep those in mind is create your data, create your HTML or markup, create your CSS, and that's, that's pretty much it. Any questions about that? And, and I like to start with this very simple one because even though it's the tiniest thing you, you build, introduces us to really the process that we're going to follow for all the other components, that are, even the ones that are more elaborate. So any questions on that? Okay, let me see how my project is going here. Okay, so this is done. I suppose I can move to this one now. So let me I'm going to continue here actually. I think it's in the interest of time it'll it'll be better for us. So let me Okay, the next component we are going to build is if we look at the card component. Card. So this is the card component. So we have the date, right? Let's build the title component. Okay. Now, here's something to keep in mind when you're building this component is, okay, so I'm going to show, I'm going to use this title component, Adam, if you want to call it, or pattern, right? And uh, sometimes this title may be a link to the full article, right? In this case, this card is just a, like a teaser to a full article. So. Sometimes I, I will need that title to be a link. Sometimes I will need a title that is not a link. So those are the kind of things I, to think about when you're building something like this because that will influence how the component is built. Even though it's just printing a string of text, um, sometimes you have to think about you know, what are the scenarios in which this component will be used. So let's go through that now. The same way we did before under um, our data. So if I expand data, I, I created an object for the title. I call, I call the title heading because we can use it as a title, we can use it as a heading of a page or a section, right? So I, call, I created an, an object for heading. Um, it doesn't always have to be this complicated. Like, uh, let me move this up here. So here's the heading object. Lines 205 to 210. So the object name is heading, and it's got four different key value pairs. One is title, 
the other one is heading level. Modifier. Modifier is almost, you, you pretty much gonna find modifier in every component. The reason for having that is sometimes you may want to pass a class to a component when you're using it to change the look of it or to do things differently with it. And then a URL. Now, all of those are empty except the title. And so, so that's our data. That's what our data looks like. And you may wonder why all of that when all we need to print is a title. Well, again, the reason is we don't want to make this so static that we can't change it when we need to use it, right? Uh, there may be times when we want to use an H1 or an H2 or an H3. How do we change that when we're trying to reuse a component that was already built as an H1, right? You want to have the ability to make that change. So that's, we're using the heading level key there to make that change. The modifier is so we can pass a class. The URL is sometimes we may, win, may want that title to be a link, sometimes not. So that URL will give us the option to do that. Okay, any questions about the data for this before we jump into the markup for it? Okay, let's look at the twig code for this. And again, uh, under patterns, text, because this is atom, right? This is the smallest piece possible you can break things down into. So there, uh, I have a heading right here. There's already a 01 headings but I'm gonna leave that alone, that came with Pattern Lab. I, I created a new one called Heading, zero, 00 Heading in this case. So again, this may look overwhelming. Let me break it down um, so that we can understand it a little bit better. Um, let me kind of build it here for you so so we can go from there so if you noticed I started with the letter H for the heading right I said because if we start with H1 or H2 then that this component becomes static I cannot longer change that heading level anywhere else it's already an H2 or whatever number I assign here so I want to be able to change that value the heading level to something else so what I did is start with the heading and then I'm going to print um, then I'm going to print the value of the heading level to, to determine whether it's going to be an H1 or H2 or H3, right? Now, what if there is no value passed on the heading level key? Then we'll have a problem. Then we're not going to have a good markup. It's just going to be an edge, and there's no such a thing as an edge HTML element, right? So we want to be able to determine Okay, if there is no value passed on the heading level key, let's provide a default value to this, right? So there's a default filter, and I'm gonna make this just for personal reasons here. And then I'm gonna close the same way. So what I'm saying here is If no value is present in the heading level key, I'm going to make this by default an H2 always. So in times when I need an H2, I don't have to do anything on the heading level value. I can just leave it alone. But on times when I need to change it to H1 or H3, then I can pass that value to the heading level key. And that will be filled in there. The next part, and then I'm closing that heading there. So the next part is I'm going to add a class, and usually I always use the class of heading, right? So every, H, every H1 through H6 will always have a class of heading. You can, you, you can use that, or you don't have to use it. Uh, it's just a personal preference. But in addition to that, the same way I did with the eyebrow, if there is a value on the modifier key, I want to also pass that as a class, just like we did with the eyebrow. So uh, I'm just going to copy this here. There's other ways you can do this logic, but I, I kind of like this one here. So 
So I'm saying if there's a value on the modifier, then print it as a class. And then close the age tag right here. Okay. There comes the next part is, okay, so sometimes I want this title to be a link. Right? Sometimes I don't. The one thing that will determine if this is a link is if there is an URL value passed to it. So I'm going to do a logic here. I'm going to say if there is a heading that URL, right? So basically, if there is a value for the heading URL, I'm going to print this here, right? The the value of that heading URL, and I'm right, and I'm passing that as a link, and then then here I'm going to print the title. So basically I'm saying I'm wrapping the title into an anchor, into a link. Only if there is a value for the URL. Else, if there is no URL value, this I'm simply printing the title. So when we're using this component, if I have a value for a URL, then that title will be used, will be printed as a link. If there is no URL value, it'll just be printing plain text, just the title on its own. So let me see if I got that right. So I'm going to save this, and this should be uh, compiling. There it is. If I go to Pattern Lab and look at Adam's text heading, this one here, there is the title. Now, right now, it's not a link. It's just text. If I expand this, here's the code that we just wrote, the tweet code. Let me move this up so some people can see this better. Okay, so here's the tweet code, right? This is the HTML simply shows an H2 with the class of heading. And this is coming from, if we go back to our data file, this is coming from here. And the reason why there is nothing else on that title being printed is because all these other things are empty. Right? There is no heading level. And we set the logic to, if there was no heading level, to use H2 as the default. The modifier is empty, and there's no URL. But let's go ahead and let's change the heading level to, let's say, H4. So we're going to put a value of 4 there. I'm going to save this, and this should recompile my code. And that should reload the page, as you see there. You see that the title changed size, because H4 is usually smaller than H2. The tweak doesn't change at all because we haven't changed any of the tweak. But if I go to the HTML part, you can see that now my title is printing as an H4. Okay. Let's do something else. Let's let's add a URL to here. I'm just going to add a placeholder for URL. I'm going to save this. That will compile the code and should reload the page. There it is. And something broke. I don't know if it's pattern lab acting up or, or what. Huh. Heading. H4. URL. Am I doing something wrong here? Let me see. Heading URL. Heading URL. Title. Else. Oh, okay. I think I know what happened. Okay. Uh, I forgot to close the quotes here for the URL. Okay. There we go. Okay. So if I hover over it, you can see now it's a link. 
because I passed a URL and there is the link now. Right. The same for if I want to add, let's say I want to use this title on a, on a uh, to be bigger than most regular titles. So I can say heading large as an example. And this should reload the page. And if I look at HTML, now in addition to heading, is heading large as well. So that allows me to change the text size for this to a larger text size. This is kind of what I was talking about um, earlier about typically you wouldn't spend this much time creating little things like this, right? Um, when you're building a traditional Drupal site or any other site, right? You would just, you know, create styles and go from there. But taking the time to do these little things is what will pay off uh, in the long, long run. And that's why some people may see it as a, an extra effort that they, they can't afford or they just don't have the luxury of time to, 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 to spend time on. So, um, so that's for HTML and data. So the CSS for this, if I go to heading, Maybe I don't even have, yeah, okay. So in this case, I didn't have to create styles for the heading because it was just going to inherit whatever the default styles are for, for the site. So that's why you don't see a heading that CSS file there. Any questions on, on that? Is again, is seems very simple, and it is. But in order to make it more dynamic, there's a few things that you need to kind of consider, right? Uh, how is this going to affect when you try to reuse this component? And what if you want to make some changes to that component when you are reusing it? So this allows you to make uh, a lot of these decisions. And then uh, once you have something like this in place, then it, this component becomes super flexible because I can use it on anything, change uh, the heading level, make it a link or not, change the look and feel without altering the original component. So, any questions on that? Yes? In my YAML file, if I have, can I have multiple headings, like, and call certain ones from that? As long as they don't have the same name. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, if I have an area where I want an H1, but another area where I need an H2. Yeah, you can maybe call the each object with h1 h2 because uh, then it, yeah it just won't take the same um, object name or key name if it's not nested in an object yeah okay. yeah okay so I think the next part is when we start getting we start seeing the benefits of, of what we just did with these two components right now you know it seems like an overkill right to build just two little things and we spent almost an hour <laughs> doing that. Um, but then we can start seeing now where the value comes. And so let's now build our card component, which will be a collection of all those little things that we built. Um, so let's, let's do that. Any questions before we get into the card? Yes. Um, I've seen that before. I can't pinpoint what the issue is. It may just be a, a possibly. I have had that uh, issue before where the uh, the info panel doesn't display. Um, maybe restart it and uh, yeah. Um, you know the version of Node for Pattern Lab is still in beta, so you know there's still little things here and there that need to be addressed. But I uh, so far. It, it's working really well for us. We're actually already using it on production, and, and so it's working. Um, OK, so the card. Um, let's take a look at the card. So the card is a molecule, right? It's a, it's a collection of atoms. And 
here it is and you if you're wondering how come it's so wide how come it doesn't look like the card we use um, this goes back to also trying to make your components as flexible as possible if I was to assign a width to this card here at, at, at the component level um, that would kind of limit me in a way if I want to use it somewhere else and make it wider I would have to do some overriding to make it wider or whatever uh, changes I want to make so what I like to do a lot of times unless there's a specific requirement is I like to leave these components like this free so that I can uh, address the width or dimensions when I'm reusing them right so this gives me the raw code for the component and I can update it later on when I'm ready to reuse it here but at, at this at this simplest uh, level I don't like to assign dimensions on something some things you may want to because the client may, may want to see what that looks like individually as a one thing but in this case uh, I figured um, I just want to let the content flow free I can I can uh, uh, address the dimensions when I'm ready to reuse this somewhere else uh, where I know what dimensions should be then I can assign dimensions there but here uh, so this gives me the flexibility that I can use it anywhere and make it as wide or as small as I want without being restricted or without having to overwrite something that I uh, did before so so we have um, so when I look at the designs before building a component like this I'm looking at and saying okay uh, let me take a look at what this component uh, is made of. So I see an image, so I, I will need an image fill, right? So think of this uh, if you're building something in Drupal, right? If you're building like a, either a content type or a paragraph type, for example. If you want to build something like this, you will say, okay, I need an image fill. I need a title or a text box fill, or just use the title fill, right, from Drupal. I need some other text box fill, which is just a string. I need a, you know, a WYSIWYG field, right, like a text area field. Uh, and I need a collection of items, right, like a list of items. Uh, it could be taxonomy terms, right, which you can use as many as you like. Uh, so those are the things uh, to think about when you're building something. So if you think of that way in Drupal, then that's exactly how you need to think of it on the front end. Okay, when I create my data, whether it's my YAML file or my JSON file, that's the same kind of data structure that I need to create to build this component. All right, so let's start with the data. And now that I've I finished the atoms, I can move on to the molecule, which is what the card is. And here what I did is I created a folder called card. Okay. Now in this one here, I opted for creating a YAML file because it's the only item on this folder, right? If this folder was to grow and more files were needed here, maybe I may want to consider moving the data to the data JSON file. But in this case, it makes sense to have it here. Again, the key here is to make sure that the YAML file matches the name of the Twig template. And that's how Twig knows where to look for the data. So let's take a look at the data here. So I created an object called card. Now the reason for creating an object, it makes it easier when you're trying to map fields and you have combination of these items together. It makes it easier when you have the object because you can just reference objects rather than referencing individual fields. I could easily get rid of the card object and just push everything to the left, and that will work too. But when I'm trying to reuse this component, and you'll see later, uh, I'm going to have to individually map each field um, in order to print all the fields uh, on the card. Having the object of card makes it easier for that and you and you'll see a, a better example of this when we get to the um, the part where we, we use the card component so the card object uh, I have a date field I have the heading uh, which will be the title for the card I'm following the same data structure that when I created a heading component 
a few minutes ago, right? Now I'm passing the value of two to the heading level. We know that the default is two, but it doesn't hurt to still pass something, right? If, even if I didn't pass anything, I know that the default will be two because that's how I build a component. Uh, I'm passing a, a new class. So in addition to heading, the title on the card will have the class of card title. This is again BEM, right? Where as a general rule, all my headings will have the class of heading. But in this particular instance, I want to make some kind of association between the title and the card, which is, is block, right, on the BEM terminology. And now instead of just being heading, I say, okay, this is the title for the card. So that is that kind of association that we were talking about when it comes to BEM. Um, I'm passing a URL because if you think about it, uh, each card is a teaser for a full article. And most likely, the title will be the link to the full article. right? So that's why we want it to be a, a link. For the image, I'm just passing uh, the full image entity. This is, in a way, is recommended because uh, when you think in terms of Drupal, if you're passing, I can easily just create an object for image and pass the URL and the alt text if I wanted to. But by passing the full image tag, the full image entity, I'm letting Drupal, if I'm thinking already in Drupal terms, I'm letting Drupal render the whole entity. And this helps with caching, right? So rather than sp sp uh, split all the pieces of the image, um, which I could easily do, um, I'd rather just say, Drupal, give me the whole image entity, the whole image node, and you know, let Drupal do things the way Drupal does, right? And um, I'm passing a modifier here for the, for the card. This modifier is for the card itself as a whole. And this will come in handy later on. Then for tags, I created a, an array of tags. So for the tags, um, the array has two uh, key value pairs. One is the label, which whatever the tag name will be, and then a URL. I'm thinking those tags will probably be taxonomy terms. So each tag will take people to a list of articles tagged with the same tag, right? Some kind of landing page that you will see all the articles that were tagged with that uh, particular tag. And I'm just putting a uh, an array of those. It could be as many as you want, right? In this case, I'm just choosing three. Finally, or not finally, but yeah, it is finally. The teaser, so that little text at the bottom of the card, that's what, um, that's what this text is. Any questions about um, this? Again, this is the data as you would normally see it if you're building a content type or a paragraph type in Drupal, right? This is kind of how you will break things down when you're doing that in Drupal. Okay. All right. Let's look at the HTML for this. Because if the, if the eyebrow was a little overwhelming, imagine what the car would look like <laughs> as far as the HTML. So but let's take a look. Um, so here is the card HTML or twig, right? And we're going to go from the top to the bottom. Um, the, the, the indentation seems off, but that's because that line is wrapping. It's not that it's wrong. Um, so, so I'm thinking a card is the representation of a teaser view of an article. So it technically makes sense to wrap the whole card or the wrapper of the card to be an article tag. That's what the HTML uh, five allows us to do now. So rather than just putting a, a div, I'm wrapping that in a HTML article tag, which is semantic, makes sense. It's good for SEO, right? Uh, and then I'm applying the class of card. So every card would just have the class of card by default. But I'm also checking to see whether there is a value on the modifier so that I can pass that if needed. And we will need it at some point today, that extra class. Right. So that's the first part of the article. Then for every field that we have in our data file, I'm first checking to see if there's data, if it's not empty. 
And so I'm saying if there's an image, card image. Again, bam, right? The association, this is the media for the card. So when you're inspecting code in your browser, you can easily know where this component is. You can tell where this is located, where the styles for this component are. Very easy to identify versus just having a bunch of divs with no semantic classes, right? So this makes things a lot more cleaner. Um, next, what I like to do with things like this, and let me, let's go back to the card so we can have a visual of what we're doing here. So here's the card. What I like to do here is, I'm already thinking about mobile uh, behavior. I'm thinking on whether, um, I, I, I've looked at the designs and I see that one of these cards is gonna be horizontal, right? So those are all the things that I need to be aware of when I'm building this. So what I'm doing is, I'm putting a wrapper on the image, card media, and I'm putting a wrapper on the rest of the content. So technically the card has two wrappers, the top and the bottom. What this allows me to do is when it's time for me to move the content to the right of the image to make this card horizontal, I just move one wrapper, right? Rather than moving all the individual fields, that could be a pain. Uh, when it's time to do a mobile or, or desktop layout, let's say this, uh, the mobile will be this, which is stacked. Maybe narrower, but it will be all stacked. If I want to show it on desktop in a horizontal way, I will just move that to the, to the right. One single wrapper rather than individual fields. So that's, that's what I like to do with markup when I'm building something like this. So if you notice, I'm wrapping the image on a wrapper with the card media class. And then I'm wrapping all the other content inside this card content class. So I'm dealing with two containers pretty much that I can move around. So it's the, way, the, the way I see it is, let's say you have all this bunch of little things that you need to move from one room to another. You have kids toys, you have clothes, you have whatever, right? A bunch of things. If you were to grab that in your hands, it will be hard for you to kind of juggle all these things, right? But if you put them in a box, you just, you just grab the box and take them. So that's kind of the way I see it. All these little things are the fields. And this box is the container where you can, it's easier to move things around if they're inside a container than if they're spread all over the place individually. That also affects responsive design because your, your, your transition in responsive design, it'll be smoother if you're just moving one container then trying to manipulate all these fields and moving into place in responsive design. Things can get all over the place. So, so those are uh, some of the things to take under consideration. So once I have my card content, I'm checking to see whether they, there's a heading um, object. And here's what I was talking about before. It is easier when you have the object because when it's time to map those fields, you're just mapping the objects rather than the individual fields. So before we get to that, so I'm first checking to see if there is a title, right? And then I'm using Twig's include statement. And this is the power of reusability in components. Rather than me writing all the HTML again for the heading level, I'm just saying, hey, I already have a component for heading or title. Why don't you give me that? and map the heading of this component to the heading of the card. And because all the fields are the same in the data structure, they'll just map automatically. If, if this, uh, where is it? If this uh, data didn't have the object of card up there, I would have to individually map each of these fields, or in this case, um, each of these fields for the title, right? So, so the system knows which one goes with which between the component that I already have built and the one that I'm using it in. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, so, but here I'm saying, hey, um, where'd it go? <laughs> Let's 
Oh, it's the card, actually. Oh, where's the card? So, first, I'm using the power of include. That's a tweak statement, right? And this namespace is uh, configured in your uh, theme info file. You can create separate uh, namespaces there. Uh, you can say, when I use the at atoms, I want uh, Twig to look into the atoms folder, and it will find whatever Twig templates are there, uh, Twig um, or molecules or organisms. So each of those will be a namespace that you can reference. So rather than specifying the full path for where your component is, you simply say, go to atoms, find this uh, folder, and inside there you'll find this Twig template. And map that map this the object on this component with the card heading, and since the fields are the same, everything will map in together. Then we have the we did the same thing with the with the date field. Here's an example of. Um, how I'm doing this different than I did up there, where I just did heading, card heading. Here, I'm individually mapping the fields. The reason for that in this case is, yes, I want the text of the eyebrow to be mapped to the card date, which is just a single field. If you look at the, um, why is this one that keeps closing? If you look at the date, it's just one, where did it go? line number two. The date is just one single field, but the eyebrow has two fields or two keys, right? It's got the, the label or text and a modifier. And in this case here, I don't have a value for modifier for the eyebrow. So that's why I'm explicitly providing that value here. I'm saying grab the date field from the card map it to the text of the eyebrow, and for the modifier on the eyebrow, pass this class. Again, BEM, right, card date. So everything has got a meaning, it's got some kind of association again. Now, has anybody wondered what this with and only mean, or what, the, what they're for? Yes, have have the wonder, or yes, you know what they're for. <laughs> okay, so the way we like to put it is giving you less rope to hang with, in a way. Is here you are in a way. You can set limits. Let's say this as an example. Let's say this eyebrow component had ten fields, and you want to include it here the way we are doing here. But you don't want all 10 fields. You just want one or two fields. You can say, give me that component with those two fields only. So that you don't have to print all the fields from that component here. You can just choose you know, a handful of fields, perhaps. So like I said, it's kind of giving you less rope to hang with uh, so that you don't include everything. Because if you didn't include with and only, uh, you, you may get errors if you're not including all the fields that that component has. So here you're kind of setting some uh, restrictions if you need to. Any questions on, on include and the data structure, how we are approaching some of these things? If you remember the eyebrow, the first thing we build, uh, the object for the eyebrow had the text uh, key and the modifier key, and the modifier key was left empty. So that's why we are passing it here. Rather, we could have done it in the data also, right? We could have, uh, here, I could have say, um, text, Like that, and then here I could have just said 
eyebrow to date and that would have been the end of it because now the fills on both the eyebrow and the date will match or they both already have values right but for this case I want to keep the date fill because if you think about it when this fill is presented to you in Drupal it will most likely just be a single fill right a single string of text that's why we're setting it up that way here Now, for the teaser, it's different. For the teaser, since we don't have a component to print teaser, we do have, but I wanted to give, give you another way in which this can be done. I'm just printing the text for the teaser. And finally, for the tags, I first check to see if we have tags, right? Then I create a, an order list. Again, this goes back to you know proper HTML, proper markup. I created a, a wrapper using an, an order list with the class of car tags. Again, using that association of between elements and the, the block. So uh, uh, the wrapper is car tags, is an order list. And then I do a loop inside the car data. I'm saying for each tag in the car tags, so here, so for each of these tags, I want to print an, a list item with the class of car tag item. And here's, again, BAM on display. This is the block. This is the element, which is the tag. And within the, the tag, is this is an item. So there is the BAM uh, at its core. So I'm saying for each tag, print a list item with this class. And inside there, print a link with the tag URL and the tag label and then close the list item and close the, the loop. So the system will go through that array and for each of those tags it will print a list item with, with the tag information. And that's how we get to, to print this here. If I inspect this, I know it's time for, for lunch. Uh, so. Um, I think we're right on track. So, um, so here's the here's the the cards, the tags, the whole list, and for each item, you see how nice this look when you're inspecting the code. Each each everything has its own class, and it's very easy to know where it belongs. In fact, this is the whole card right here. I'm going to here's the whole card. Here's the media. Here's the rest of the content, and here's the H2, the date, the teaser, and the tags. And this is exactly how it will be rendered in Drupal, believe it or not. So huge, huge way of improving the data and the markup for how components are rendered in your site. So we can review this when we come back from lunch. Uh, are there any questions before we head over? I don't want to be between lunch and you. So. I'm recording all this, so hopefully you can capture this later on if you're, if you're not able to follow along. But um, yeah, let's have lunch, and uh, I guess we'll be back in an hour.